Well, it's, it's, it's brilliant for us as women to hear that we've got this woman <laughs> who's not heading up Malawi. But let's just talk about this, because I was saying to you before mm -hmm. the show, we do see this on the African continent. We see a new leader come in, guns blazing. They mm -hmm. want to make reforms, and they do make those reforms sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then we do see a relapse later on as they continue in their role. Just talk to us about what you're expecting from Joyce Banda. Okay, I think the first big positive for Malawi is that they all parties, and that's all political parties within Malawi and stakeholders, follow the constitution. And that was, of course, in the case of the death of a president to hand over the power to the vice president. And that was a big positive. It showed that some African countries, at least, can respect institutions when they are in place. Mm -hmm. That's a big plus. Uh, Malawi has undergone some uh, years, like two to three years, of economic hardships due to ver various policy decisions. And it is hoped that under this new um, president, uh, as you said, um, third woman president in Africa, Joyce Banda, that she could address some of those policies and allow for an economic turnaround for Malawi. Mm -hmm. And we are already aware she's already engaging the donor community, mm -hmm. which is probably one of the big areas. Um, as you probably know, a big chunk of the budget is dependent on donor aid. And in re-engaging them, they're hoping that the taps open once Well, again. let's just talk a little bit about that 40% of Malawi's mm. budget estimated, about 40% coming from donor aid. And, and, and that's actually quite problematic. I was talking to you about yeah. Dambisa's Moyo, Dambisa Moyo's book, book um, uh, Dead Aid, where she talks about this. Mm. And she says, you know, aid is what is keeping the African continent mm -hmm. back compared to what other economies are doing. So when we talk about 40%, coming from donor aid and if you upset those donors they'll pu pull that funding back. True. It is a substantial amount of the budget to depend on the international community on. I think the what we should look at though is the end intention. Basically that several African countries, not just Malawi including Rwanda, try to wean themselves off that debt in time. So as we progressively move forward, we hope that 40% drops to 35, 30, to a point where the government becomes self-sustaining. I think that's the end intention. I think the big concern is when uh, diplomatic relations with the international community turn sour, then there's an up Rupt, switching off of that tap, then it does have dire consequences for the average man. What are the, the donors? What are what are the donors or potential donors or donors that have pulled out of Malawi right now? Britain being one of them. Mm. What do they? What do you think they want to see from the leadership in Malawi to be able to pour money back into that country? Some, one of the big policy decisions around the Kwacha, which has been considered to be overvalued for at least three years now, um, the former or late President Mutaika had preferred to keep it at that level. His reasoning was that it kept imports cheap for his people, particularly business people. But it is overvalued, doesn't reflect a fair value, and that's why you're seeing such a severe forex shortage within the country, particularly as people anticipate a devaluation. We're likely to see a devaluation come through over the short term. Whether they will have it phased or it will be one abrupt large devaluation yet to be seen, but that should impact um, the flow of forex or supply of forex going forward. Yes, it's going to be short-term big pain for Malawi once the devaluation goes through, but in the long term it's a positive, particularly as the currency begins to actually reflect fair value. I want to talk a little bit about that forex because mm -hmm. one of the, the concerns that the finance minister has right now is that we've got about 80% of the foreign currency coming from Malawi's tobacco and saying that Correct. they do need to move away from depending so much on tobacco because that's quite huge when you're talking Correct. about 80% of your, of your forex coming from that. Where do you think Malawi can capitalize on in that economy to be able to grow or, or perhaps move into diversification? Okay, Malawi is an agriculture-based uh, economy and as you rightly said, tobacco, sugar, tea, those are the big exports and bigger generators of um, export earnings. We now have uranium as a major export now in the case of Malawi, which is a big positive. It does diversify, but not significantly. It's still a small part of exports. I think what Malawi should be looking to do is not necessarily move away from being agriculture-based. I mean, Kenya is a good example of an agriculture-based economy, but more of processing, so more agro-processing. And that can only be accelerated or progressed if you have power. And one of the big issues that you've probably noted over the past couple of, of years is that power shortages or shortfalls have intensified. So if they can invest in the rehabilitation of their power uh, infrastructure within the country, that would help industry uh, build up within the country and move from the extractive industry and agriculture industry into the more value adding uh, sectors. Well, let's just talk a little, you were talking about Forex and, and, and what you think is going to happen right now mm -hmm. when it just comes, because it seems that there are quite a few things that, that the Joyce Banner and her administration are going to have to work on right now. What do you think is number one priority for Malawi? Um, 
The number one priority would probably be to re-engage with the donor community. I think the lack of donor funds, particularly for big, uh, important social sectors such as health and education, is a big issue and that's impacting the average man and child. Uh, so schools and hospitals, I mean, we're hearing uh, hospitals being without medication. Mm. I mean, one of the reasons Motriago has flown out to South Africa was because of the poor medical situation within Malawi. So once they can get that uh, donor aid flowing into the right sectors, particularly social sectors, I think that will be a big positive in terms of delivering service to the average person. Just looking at just looking at Ms. Banders, uh, you know, uh, her profile and just her background mm -hmm. and, and how she's been really involved when it comes to, to to developing women, when it comes to poverty reduction, you know, and 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 there's also reports that there was some kind of conflict between her and the president. Just in terms of of the direction that she's going to take okay. a, as a leader, what do you think that's going she's to be? She's a renowned woman activist. Mm. She set up probably the first business um, businesswoman's uh, foundation or association in Malawi. So she's very much gender conscious and also um, uh, conscious of um, um, delivering more to children, particularly on the education side, um, ensuring that they have adequate diets. So you're going to see a president, I think, who's going to be, yes, she's going to try and engage the donor community, also seek to attract investors but she's going to be more concerned about what's happening within the households uh, what's happening particularly with small and medium enterprises those have been particularly hurt due to the forex and fuel shortages in recent years and also what's happening in terms of credit access microcredit programs mm -hmm. and the like that's something she's pushed uh, forward as well so you're going to see someone who's more social uh, infrastructure conscious probably than the previous administration. That said though, I'm sure Mutaiga's legacy, particularly for his first term, will be the fertilizer subsidy program, which he put forward that led to that uh, food security in those particular years. And that was groundbreaking because that did so much. I mean, it turned some people that used to be subsistence farmers to be able to, to move more than just subsistence farmers to Correct. be able to export. Correct, and for a poor country like Malawi, food security is core and number one. But as we said earlier, they need to move beyond that and to more value-adding activity. And that, I think, has that progression was hampered by the challenges of recent years. Mm, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Always great speaking to you. Thanks, Hannah.